welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This video is to demonstrate how I use my circular sock machine that I printed on a 3D printer to knit simple sock tubes. This machine does have the ability to knit in both directions, so you can knit heels and toes with it, uh, but this video will be focusing on the equipment needed to knit with this machine, the setup, um, casting on, knitting a tube, changing colors, and casting off. Uh, in order to uh, knit with a circular sock machine, there is some equipment involved. So I have my machine set up. I have some um, sock yarn that I'm gonna use. I also have some uh, waste yarn that I'll be using at the beginning and the end. I have um, some tools like scissors, I have a measuring tape, and I have this small tool um, that I find very useful. It's got a crochet hook on one end and just sort of a pick on the other. Uh, this is a tube that I got from a circular sock um, machine website. I believe I got mine from Angora Valley, uh, but I do find this a tool to be quite useful in terms of picking up stitches and casting on. If you don't have a tool like this and you don't want to get one, uh, a small gauge um, crochet hook such as this one um, would be very useful. I also have a buckle which is used to create tension or um, weight on the knitted project that we're going to be making. This I also printed off of my 3D printer. I have some weights. Uh, this one here can be uh, purchased at um, knitting machine supply websites, but I've also created my own using an old sock of my husband's and filling it with beans or rice um, or what have you. And this um, homemade weight weighs about two pounds. I also have an old sock and I'm going to be using that old sock to uh, cast on my knitting. When you knit with a circular sock machine, um, you do need something to create stitches off of. That's often called a cast on bonnet. Uh, a cast on bonnet can be a tube of knitting that you have lying around. It could be something that you have knit with your circular sock machine. Uh, or it can be an old sock that has holes in it. Um, so I'm going to be using a sock because I think that's something that a lot of people have lying around and um, is probably the most accessible version of a cast on bonnet. Um, your cast on bonnet should have some length to it. I'd recommend at least probably five or six inches of knitting because you need to be able to attach your buckle to that piece of knitting so that you can um, create tension and pull down on the knitting so that your stitches don't pop off of your machine. The machine I'm using today has 64 stitches, uh, but the cast on technique is the same for whatever size of cylinder you're using or whatever size sock tube you want to make. Before we get knitting on the circular sock machine, I just want to show you my setup and a couple of the features of this circular sock machine. Uh, when you're knitting with a circular sock machine, the tube or your sock tube comes out directly beneath the um, machine. So your knitting will come out right down here and will have to drop straight down from your machine. You do have to have some tension or some weight on that knitting so that the stitches continue to come down and don't pop off the needles. So I have set up a little um, table. This was a very inexpensive table I got from Ikea and I removed one of the boards so that there is a space for my knitting to drop down. Other uh, circular sock machines uh, will be suspended off the side of a table. Um, this is a setup that works for me but I would encourage you to find um, a setup that works for you, knowing that the uh, knitting does need to come down from the bottom of the machine and you do need to be able to apply um, weight to that knitting. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you before we get started is the adjustments for making different size stitches with your circular sock machine. These machines have small V's which determine how far down the needles travel. The further down the needle travels, the larger the stitch you're going to make, and the larger the stitch you make, the fewer stitches you have per inch. So if you want a tight gauge, which um, I find to be preferable for sock knitting, you would probably move your, um, your uh, adjustment or your knob up. And if you want a larger stitch, you would move this down. Uh, what you can do is just mark on your machine uh, what your preferred adjustment is, um, or you can adjust depending on what kind of yarn you're using. I'm gonna be using this sock as my cast on bonnet. And before I start picking up stitches off of it, I'm going to put the buckle on it so that I can add weight when I start to knit. So to do that, I uh, open up the buckle and I flip it upside down and I'll just pull my sock through. In this case, I'm gonna pull it up past the heel so that the weight is evenly distributed all around the sock. And I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it. And now I can suspend my weight from the bottom of this buckle. I have a simple carabiner attached and I can pick up stitches using my sock. I'm going to flip the sock inside out so that I can see the purl stitches. Um, these loops are easiest to pick up. And I'm going to place this inside my sock machine. Okay. Now I'm just going to start picking up random um, loops and placing them on every other needle. You don't have to pick up a stitch on every needle. Um, every other needle works really well. And the stitches that, or the needles that don't have stitches on them will um, have yarn attached to them on our first round, creating what is essentially a yarn over, um, which makes a stitch and then we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up a purl bump from the back here like this, using my little tool or your crochet hook, and I'm gonna place it on a needle. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all the way around my sock machine. Now you'll notice that there are gaps in the needles because not all of them are up at the moment. Some of them are in a down position uh, and those needles that are in the down position are being get, getting ready to go down and then up to catch the yarn when we make stitches. We're just going to put loops on all of the needles that we can see for now and then we will move the um, sock machine forward and catch those extra stitches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go around, taking my time, putting loops on every other um, needle. You don't have to be too special or careful about this. As long as there's a loop on the needle, it'll be fine. It doesn't have to be all in the same row. Okay, as I hope you can see, I have put a loop on every other needle that is in the up position. Now, in order to advance um, my machine and to get more needles in the up position, I'm just gonna turn the crank. And as I turn, you can see more needles moving up on this side. And the ones that I have pulled or put onto um, needles are gonna be pulled down on this side. So I'm just gonna move ahead and then I'm gonna put uh, loops on every other needle over here on this side. If you want to move in the opposite direction, you can certainly do that. Your machine moves in both, uh, both directions, counterclockwise and clockwise. So you can uh, do this in whatever order you like. I'm just gonna keep doing that. Okay. Okay, now I still have some needles to fill up over here, but as you can see, my the first stitches are just getting to the point where um, the yarn comes through. So I'm going to use my waste yarn. In this case, it's this stripey, stripey yarn. And I'm going to just put it in a yarn bowl to maintain it, but you don't have to do that. I just like to keep it in one place. Now I'm gonna pull 
um, the tail of my waste yarn through the yarn feeder on my machine, which is right here. I'm gonna use the little crochet hook on my machine to pull it through. And I'm just gonna hold it to the inside. Now I find just holding the yarn to the inside is fine. It will keep it and give it enough tension. And I'm gonna start making stitches here and then stopping and picking up the rest of my stitches on this side. At this point, you're going to want some weight on your knitting because as you can see this, uh, the knitting, um, it's got some tension, but not a lot. And we want it to be pulled down so that the needles will stay, the yarn will stay on our needles and be able to pull a loop through. So I'm going to use my weighted sock and I'm just going to put it on that carabiner that you saw from earlier. You may have to pull it down slightly so that it can be seen below the level of your machine. If you like, you can add extra weight by adding uh, another sock with extra weight or whatever weights you have. Um, I find using two pounds is usually enough, um, but you may need to adjust that depending on how your machine works. Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and crank this forward. And you can see some stitches starting to be formed. The, the needles that did not have a loop on them now have um, a little yarn over on them. And as we move around this first, if, if at the beginning you didn't make any stitches, that's fine. Just pull that yarn to the inside. We'll catch it on the next round. This waste yarn is simply to set up your knitting for your sock tube. All right. Uh, now you can see that not all of my needles got a yarn over. Uh, you can go ahead and lift them up on this first round. Um, or you can leave them and make sure that they get caught on the next round. Uh, I like to make sure that all of my needles have either a stitch or a yarn over on them by the time I'm done my first round. So I'm just gonna keep moving forward until all of my needles have, again, a stitch or a yarn over. And there we have it, the beginning of our knitting. If you have a stitch that pops off, so you have the loop and then some yarn, as I do right here, you can just go ahead and take that bottom loop or the stitch that should have been and pull it down and over. All right, I have some knitting. I'm gonna go ahead and crank this forward a few rounds uh, to create some um, knitting with my waist yarn. right here because um, as maybe you can see I have a couple spots where the stitches um, didn't get pulled through or my new loop didn't get pulled through like right here and right here again I'm just going to use my little tool to pull the bottom loop up and over and then just make sure that that stitch has got um, enough yarn in it to not be too tight and then I'm just going to keep knitting
right, I have knit about mm, 15 or so rounds of um, waste yarn. You can do as many or as few rounds of waste yarn as you like. Uh, I'd recommend at least an inch or two um, so that when you go to knit your sock tube, you have some uh, room to play. Now I'm going to cut my waste yarn and add my uh, actual working yarn that I want to make my sock out of. Okay, I've cut my uh, waste yarn and left a bit of a tail, and I'm going to pull that through to the inside of my sock tube. And just leave it there for a moment. Now I'm going to take my working yarn, and I'm going to pull that through to the inside of my tube. The tail of your waste yarn and the tail of your working yarn should come through the same space in between the needles so that no stitch or needle is skipped or lost. I'm just going to hold on to these gently on the inside of my knitting. Uh, you don't have to be too tight about it. And um, I have seen some people use different clamps to hold them to the inside, but I find if I just hold on to it um, loosely, then that should be fine. I'm going to move slowly. Uh, just in case I drop a stitch here. Um, so we're just going to slowly progress um, and make sure that we don't lose any stitches. Okay, so now you can see I have the tail of my waist yarn on the inside and I have the tail of my working yarn on the inside. Now I can just move forward and knit with my working yarn. The two stitches at the very beginning of the um, switch of colors are going to be a little bit loose, but when you go to take the waste yarn off um, and use your working yarn, you can tighten up those stitches um, when you create your sock. Now I'm just going to go ahead and crank, uh, crank away, making a sock tube um, as long as you like. What I like to do is knit uh, one really long tube and turn that into two socks. But equally, you could turn, um, you could knit uh, a tube for one sock, place some waste yarn, and then knit another tube for another sock. Make sure as you're knitting that your weight doesn't um, bottom out or rest on the floor, because if that happens, it could be that your knitting is not getting enough tension, and then you may be losing stitches um, as they pop off because they don't have enough tension on them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, crank away and I'll meet you when I have a big long sock tube. have a small tail left. I'm going to do the same thing I did the last time I changed colors. So I'll pull through my tail and I'll grab my waste yarn again. 
and pull that through, making sure that they go through the same slot or hole between two needles. I'll hold them gently and advance the machine. Okay, here's a good example of what to do if you drop a stitch. As you can see, I just did. I've picked it up with my tool, my crochet needle, and I'm just gonna go ahead and zip it up um, the way you would any drop stitch and place it on the needle. Right now, I'm using the crochet hook to hold the loop of knitting in place and then pull each horizontal bar of knitting through from the inside of the knitting to the outside. Keep in mind that the inside of your knitted tube are the purl side of the stitch and so each loop needs to be pulled from the inside to the outside to maintain that pattern. So I'm just using my crochet hook to pull up loops um, along the way of that drop stitch and I'm just going to advance my machine until I have the needle poking out and I'll place my stitch on there. Okay, now I'm just going to knit um, several rounds with my um, waist yarn. Um, I'd like to take my knitting off the needles. I've knit about maybe eight rounds with my waist yarn and I'm going to cut it. Now in order to get my knitting off um, the machine, I'm just going to crank ahead and um, the knitting is just going to sort of uh, take itself off. Now these will be loose stitches, which is why I've used the waist yarn so that my stitches that I want to make a sock tube out of are safe and held with the waste yarn. And I'm just gonna go ahead and advance. And you'll see the stitches will just start to come off the needle until I've done the whole tube. And that's it. And so here we have it. We started with a sock <laughs> that we picked some stitches up with. We knit some waste yarn and then we knit one big long sock tube ending with some waste yarn. And now this sock tube can be turned into a sock, which will be the subject of my next video. I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. Um, I hope that by showing you how I knit and then also um, do some troubleshooting like uh, fixing a drop stitch uh, when the loop doesn't come through and you have to lift it over or picking up a dropped stitch by using my crochet hook to ladder up and put that stitch back on the needles. I hope that um, all of those little techniques will be helpful for you as you start to learn how to use your circular sock machine. Um, good luck and happy knitting. Bye.